Okay, today it is very cold, so um, decided we work on the pellet stove. So I'm basically gonna do an unboxing of the stove, and uh, just you can see what we're looking at here. I've already uh, taken the frame off that came. It was completely surrounded, so it was packed very well. And then it had a box over the top of that. Um, bought this from Tractor Supply. It was on sale for a thousand dollars. I think it was a Black Friday sale, maybe. Um, first thing I noticed is it's black. Online, it shows it being a gray. It said it was gray, unpainted steel. And uh, pretty clearly it's black. So that's a difference. Um, we actually were wanting the unpainted version because we thought about actually painting it the way we wanted it to be. Right? You guys are going to put... But kittens and stars and plastic, or not plastic, uh, planets all over it. Yeah. That'd be fun. So my understanding is that's some pretty heavy. This is probably, I don't know, three or four pounds. This would be the burn pot. So that's pretty deep. So the burn pot, this is where the pellets fall down inside. And then that... Um, all the ash will fall out through the bottom and the air blows up through the bottom to keep it going. That's that's some pretty beefy stuff right there. Down here, where is the... I thought that had a actual ash pan, but I guess it doesn't. So that's a kind of a disadvantage because now I've got to get inside there and clean that out. I could have swore it had an ash pan. Well, that blows. Anyways, the fan, a little hot air out of there. Instructions! Yep, that's just, uh, oh, there's the remote. Comes the remote, and then uh, this will go on the, uh, that down there so it doesn't get hot and burn you. This is the hopper. So inside we got mystery box. I'm just open this box. Hey. Plug. Mystery box number two. Oh, it's probably a thermostat. I think it came with a thermostat. Oh, and I bet this is the um, came with a fresh air. Look at all the gizzards in the Yeah, that's the thermostat. Why don't we close the door? I know it's cold. This is we're messing with steel that's been sitting out here and. We got down to 20 last night, so it's very cold. Yep, this is the fresh air kit. Comes with four ring things. These are pipe straps. This is for mounting something to the wall. A box. Now this, oh, so this is if you don't use a fresh air intake to the outside if you just want to have it cover up um, the intake in the back that's what you'd use that, that for and that's the piece that would go to the outside so this would go in your wall um, I believe another piece in here yes yeah, so I'm pretty sure this would sandwich in between your wall to make the connection to the fresh air outside there's our mounting pieces for the thermostat. Instructions. More mounting pieces. And the thermostat. And a little digital thermostat doodaddy there. So all in all, we bought this unit because it actually came with more stuff. It came with the thermostat. It came with the remote. Um, it came with all that fun stuff. came with the... Uh, uh, fresh air kit so that's why we bought it it's it's a definitely a cheaper version but um, there's the side information you got a heat exchanger fan a room fan draft fan auxiliary on off auger delay mode I'll have to read and figure out what all these exactly are on the back side 
There's my exhaust, there's my fresh air intake. And then I have an adapter that turns that into a four. This guy right here, so this bumps up to a four inch. And then the reason why I did a four inch was because uh, of my distance. If you're over a certain distance, um, you cannot use a three inch pipe. So I did bump up to a four, so I figured I might as well do it down here instead of somewhere else in the line. And then here's my adapter to go from the four to the six. And this, I'm still not 100% sure if that's exactly how this is supposed to fit in there. Um, it seems like it should, you know, screw into the bottom or, you know, twist in like they usually do, but this just sits there. So I'm going to have to uh, see if that actually works. But it's four inch, four inch to six inch, and it said this is what I needed, but it doesn't exactly seem like it would work. See all those big gaps around there? Fill it in with hot glue. Yeah, that one. That's probably what I would do. And these sides, I know there's a way because so you take these screws off up there and down there and then the side panel one there. Side panel comes off so you can get access to the inside to clean your fans and things like that. You do other maintenance. There's one this panel comes off as well. This thing is heavy. I know, it's pretty pretty beefy, isn't it? And hot. Very cold. Yeah, it's very cold. Well, I guess we're gonna have to buy an ash vacuum so we can get in there and vacuum out the ashes. I cannot wait to get this thing working. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cold. So I've got hooked together a 14 foot pipe, which I'm working on now. So it's got some high temp silicone putting around the seal here and then uh, marking on the pipe exactly where the uh, end of the screw part stops at to make sure I get it in there all the way. So for example, right here is where it comes the uh, little tooth comes in at and it slides clear over to here. So I'm putting the line down so I know that I've got it turned all the way. These don't go in there very easily. So this way I know that uh, um, it's 100% locked in place and the silicone gives you your air seal. Every level should have a knife. So what I put on was the insulation sleeve, which um, when they spray foam insulation, it keeps the insulation away from touching this pipe. Uh, this is an uh, insulated pipe that can still get warm. So by the time it gets to the foam, it will be an inch away from the actual pipe itself. How much does this one hold? I'm not going to fill all this on the first run. Okay, probably a good idea. How much does this one hold? Is this uh, a whole bag holds, or is it two bags? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half? Wow, that's a big... It holds a lot. So it's supposed to take about five minutes before it actually... on the lower left side. Oh! Oh, yep. It does a little cigarette layer. So at what point does it stop putting pellets in? Does it know? It just keeps going. Oh, it just keeps throwing them in? It, that's why you can run this. It'll run 24/7 as long as there's pellets, and it'll just keep going. Okay. Is can you turn the temperature down though? Yeah. Okay. We've looked at so many of these. I forget. That's well, light is going. This has been running on our pellet stove down there for three days now. So three days this has been running and I can put my hand on it and be just fine. I really thought when I came through this 45 that it would get hotter than this, but uh, it's not. I really thought it would be hot, but now granted I'm only on, I think we've only burned it up to level two 
I know it does get hotter if you're on a higher level, uh, but I have had it on five before just to test it and put my hand on the pipe. And, and although you could keep it on there for a few seconds, it would get hot, maybe about five, 10 seconds, you could keep your hand on there before it got uncomfortable. But you know, this right now, this feels like a warm bath. <laughs> so, so I'm not worried about any fire issues with this. This is forced air. So the fan in the pellet stove is pushing the air out and um, keeping it from really subtly and getting really hot because the air is pushed through. Uh, there's my insulation shield. So what I did there is, is by the time it gets up to the insulation, there's a good one inch gap there. And this is cold because the air is outside air on the other side of this. So insulation wise, of course I have, you know, somewhat of a gap here in my insulation uh, barrier. But um, I mean, that's not down here, it's warm and this is cold. So not worried about any fire hazards or anything with this system. So we're gonna do a quick follow up on our pellet stove here. So did the unboxing, um, we ran it over Christmas and uh, just kept it on low for the most part. And it kept the, uh, this area at about at 65. So right now we are on um, heat setting one, which is low. And I do have a dedicated outlet just for the fireplace. We've been using it, you can see the extension cord, been using it for uh, other things while it's been unplugged. And then I bought a ash vacuum to uh, suck the ash out. But as far as this goes, you pretty much just leave it on auto. So if I do the heat range, so if I do heat range up or down, that just changes the, uh, the heating setting on it. So I can go clear up to five is the highest it'll go. And then one is the lowest. Like, so we've been keeping it like at one at night and we may crank it up to two, I think we did three at one point during the daytime. Um, the fan, the draft motor and all that, and auxiliary I'm not even using, but like the fan, um, a room fan and draft fan. So a room fan turns your blower motor up that blows into the room. Draft fan turns the fan up that blows into the firebox. Now if you, you know, if it's on auto, these are just automatically set to work well. If you take the draft fan and turn it up too high, what will happen is it will burn all your pellets up um, faster than the pellets can fall into and your fire can go out. Um, so they suggest just to leave these where they're at. I saying if you turn it down, um, you may not get enough uh, burn in there and it'll overflow your, um, it'll overflow and then knock it out that way. This looks like we're up to heating speed now. As you can see that flame's going pretty good. Pretty soon here it'll kick on the outer fan here in a minute. And it's not very loud. I mean, it's no louder than any other fireplace we've ever had. I've heard complaints. You know, people talking about how loud these are. Okay, just heard the other fan kick on. One thing that did kind of throw us is the the fan that runs the the flame will kick on and off and on and off. So once it reaches the internal temperature, um, it'll just kind of kick the fan on and off. And then once the um, box up here gets hot enough, it'll kick on the fan for the room. So it's kind of a different you know, the normal fireplace where the fan's on and it just blows. I can hear kicking on off, it's off right now. There it goes. So it's on for just a few seconds and it turns back off. Here in a minute the blower fan will kick on. Um, hopper wise, haven't really had any issues in here. One night it did go out because we put in one bag. This will take about, I mean, two bags. It says two and a half, but two bags is about all I really want to put in there. Um, it'll drain down through the center, end up with a cone coming down either side. So what happened to us is that we opened it up in the morning because it had shut off about four o'clock. And you can see there are still plenty of pellets in there, but there's a hole down to where it was in the center because this isn't sloped steep enough to make sure that the pellets will actually flow down to the middle. So at night, all we do is we just get in here and discard if we just push these up to the center like that, then it has more to draw off of. But 
really the side should have been sloped steeper to make sure things flow down down into the hopper better but beyond that i mean i haven't had any issues with it at all so far i don't think it's that loud um, we went straight to a four inch pipe out the back so this was a three inch to a four inch t and this is the four inch uh, pellet vent that runs up and out but also i can put my hand on this and it's not hot you know if i'm on a two or a three setting um i've tested i put my hand on it and didn't feel anything at all i mean it's warm but it's not going to burn you we ran up to five once just to see what it was like and that was to the point where i could put my hand on it for i don't know five seconds or so and then it got too hot to leave on there but uh, the brackets that come with it these uh pellet vents uh, brackets keep it off the wall as far as it's supposed to be I put this vent in here because the idea was that I was gonna put a blower on this to suck air back in through the bedrooms so I have a vent in every bedroom and this was supposed to pull the air off of it and back uh, problem is I don't think there's enough heat right here you know all the heat blows out out the front and there's really not a heck of a lot of heat in in the back area. it just doesn't get hot back in here um, you know, this whole top area stays cold on the sides. It's not hot right now, so you probably can't see it, but you can definitely, you can see it right there. See this line? That's the box. That's the part where the flame is. That's the only part that gets hot really right there and then the front of it. Everything back in here up to the top is cold to the touch. So there's not a lot of heat, you know, really coming off this to, uh, suck any any heat back through that so i'm still trying to figure out what i'm going to do there uh, one of my thoughts was is that because this pipe does get warm over time i can feel right now it's getting warm is that i could actually have this suck up from the chimney space the attic space and suck down and then through and this actually becomes the uh the heating heating part at that point so i may still try and use this somehow but we're going to build a mantle around this and that's the height that'll be off the floor. It's basically gonna be a two by four with three quarter inch ply on top of it. So I gotta build some sort of a, a hearth and then I wanna build sides on it and a mantle. I've gotta be able to get into the back to uh, clean out the cap here at the bottom, which I just checked that we burned six or seven bags, I think, and there was nothing in there at all. And then, um, but anyways, I gotta get access to the fan motors back in here and then the controller on the side i'd like to be able to at least see it's got to have some way to reach back in there and touch that now it does have a remote control um and then the right here is where the remote control um, sensor is at so i'm trying to keep talking so i wait for the fan to kick on <laughs> so you can hear how loud that is actually it is on didn't even know it came on. I don't know if you can hear that. But that's it. That's as loud as it gets. It is not very loud at all. So this is just a $900 cheap King pellet stove that we got from Tractor Supply. We bought a cheap one because um, we're going to look at a more expensive brand, but they're, you know, four or $5,000. And we figure we'll just buy this one at a thousand dollars, and if it lasts a year, you know, then we can buy one next year. And if we have to buy one every year, that's five years. We get a brand new stove every year, and surely we get more than one year out of it. And um, after five years of the more expensive ones, they'd be breaking down from what the reviews we've seen. So it made sense to us to just keep buying a new one every year. And if we get two years out of it or three years out of it, then great. But uh, so far it's working fine for us but again it's not um, loud we're on off-grid uh, solar power wise it seems to use oh boy let me think about that i want to say about 600 to 800 watts um, the problem with it is that that's continuous watts so you're constantly drawing that that power um, we run it all night 
and um, don't see a really huge drain on our on our batteries but we have a big battery bank too we have 150 amp hours so you can see now once it gets up to heat the flame gets gets a little lower and then every now and then the flame will kick up high when it detects that it needs more heat so anyway I hope this helps some people um, it was easy to install, easy to operate. Everything's working fine.